Hello everyone, my name is Serena Teneja, I'm a junior doctor working in the UK and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here to talk to you with some things I've learned about how to prepare for the MRCS Part A. I've accumulated a lot of knowledge about how best to tackle this exam and I'd love to share them with anyone who's thinking of sitting this exam soon. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So what is the MRCS examination? MRCS stands for the Membership of the Royal College of Surgeons and it is an exam made up of two parts um, which you must pass if you want to be a surgical trainee in the UK. If you look at this diagram which outlines the training pathways you can see that after your foundation training which is where I am as an F2 you can apply for surgical training either going down the core surgical pathway or doing a run through going straight into speciality training. For both pathways you must complete both part A and part B of the MRCS before you enter ST3. MRCS part A is an entirely theoretical written paper. It's made up of 300 single best answer multiple choice questions and MRCS part B is a practical OSCE style examination. Focusing on MRCS part A for this video there are three sittings per year in January, April and September. The pass mark is fairly high, around 70%, um, although that fluctuates and fluctuated a lot in the September sitting. You can sit it in several locations all around the world, but wherever you sit it, you could be sure to be paying quite a hefty price for it. Okay, so we've talked about when you have to sit the MRCS by, but when is a good time that you should sit it? And for that, the best thing to do is to look at the evidence. As you can see in this graph printed in the British Medical Journal, you could see that they found that the sooner you sit it after medical school, the better the outcomes. In other words, if you sit it in your foundation years, so F1 or F2, you're more likely to pass than if you sit it in your core surgical training years. Also, if you have sat it by the time you apply for your core surgical training post, you can get some extra points on your portfolio too, so it's definitely worth sitting it early. But remember that the MRCS exam isn't just another hoop to jump through, it is also something that should be contributing positively to your surgical knowledge, so sit it at a time where it makes sense for you in terms of being a good surgeon as well. Okay, so time to dissect the MRCS Part A exam a little bit further. So it is a five hour exam in total, consisting of two papers, and there are 300 questions covered. That works out to one minute per question. And that's free quick maths. Paper one is called the Applied Basic Science paper. It is three hours long with 180 questions and it covers topics like surgical anatomy, physiology and pathology. Paper two is called Principles of Surgery in General. It is two hours long with 120 questions and it covers things like common surgical conditions, in GI, vascular, orthopaedic surgery for example, uh, also covers things like trauma, perioperative management, preoperative management, etc. There is an MRCS syllabus document which the Royal Colleges have produced which is really useful for seeing what topics come up where and most importantly in what sort of weighting. So if we go through that document in a bit more detail, here it is, you can just find it if you google MRCS syllabus. There's quite a lot of detail there about all the topics it covers. Don't worry about how long it is, there's a lot of overlap um, between the topics. The most important part in my opinion is this part down here, which is breaking down all the topics into how much they appear in the exams. So we can see here, paper one, applied basic sciences. It's broken down into anatomy and also how many questions on average on each type of anatomy come up, uh, as well as all the other topics we talked about like the physiology and pathology as well. Definitely look at this very early on before you start your revision. So the exam is one mark per correct answer. There's no negative marking for any wrong questions, so you have to make sure you answer them all. Some questions in the paper are not actually included in the final mark. They are just there as test questions for the colleges to see how they're answered and whether to use them in future exams. I've sat it in person and online and I'm not going to go too much into those experiences because I'm not sure what the future exams will be like but feel free to message me if you do have any specific questions about that. Okay so now jumping into the revision tools that I use and I would recommend. I'm going to split this into two categories. Firstly the gathering of knowledge and secondly practicing what you've learnt. We'll look at gathering first and we'll split that into books and websites. Starting with books 
My first recommendation would of course be the Grey's Anatomy Student Edition, which I think I actually have a physical form of. This is quite the beast, as you can see. And no, obviously I did not read all of this. It's very dusty, you can see that I haven't actually used it in a long time. Now I use a PDF version online, but of course I bought this on day one of med school thinking I would need it. I did not need it. This book is incredible for all the illustrations. I obviously did not read all the words, but it is a good book of reference if there's something you're not sure of or something you're learning for the first time. The next book I want to recommend is called Basic Sciences for the MRCS. This is a fantastic book for really concise and clear summaries of topics. It covers anatomy, physiology and pathology, so the big topics that appear in paper one, and it manages to condense them into really easily digestible chunks. And it's a really fantastic resource for quick, detailed and really exam relevant knowledge um, for the paper one topics, so I really recommend going through it. I'm just editing the video and realised I didn't include resources I used for clinical surgery, so all the surgical specialities that feature a lot in paper two. I mainly used my medical school notes for that and I made those from the um, Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine, which if you studied in the, in the UK, I'm sure you've heard of. And even if not, um, I would recommend because a lot of the clinical questions are based on UK guidelines. Um, there's also a surgery specific version of the handbook, but there's a lot of detail and information in that and it's hard to know what to focus on. So the best thing actually was the inbuilt textbook in EMRCS, which is one of the question banks I'll be talking about shortly. I had loads of information about all the surgical specialities and the important guidelines that you need to know. It was a really good point of reference to point you towards what you need to know for the exam. Okay, next I'm going to talk to you about some of my favourite websites that I used. First up is Teach Me Anatomy. I know I've talked a lot about the illustrations in the Gray's textbook, but I have to say the ones on this website are unmatched in terms of their simplicity, how much information they manage to pack too. There is a lot of text there which explains the concepts too, but I mainly used the images. So next up is the Royal College of Surgeons website because they actually have a lot of resources on there that you can use for revision. Um, if you get RCS affiliate membership, which is £15 a year, you can access um, all of their resources. Resources I used were Ackland Anatomy, which are live cadaveric dissections, um, pointing out all the structures that you need to know. And I also used a video series called Funky Professor, which is a mixture of diagrams and um, dissection from cadavers. If you are a visual learner like me, then I think you'll really enjoy these videos. They really help you visualize all the anatomy and orientate yourself around the human body. And it's also nice just to shake up your revision technique sometimes. And the third website is, of course, this wonderful website that you're on right now, and that is YouTube. I can spend hours and hours reading about something and not really taking too much in, but then you stumble across an amazing video where someone has summarized that whole topic in around five or 10 minutes, and just watching that makes me understand it and remember it and retain it for an exam. So it's really worth checking YouTube out. The two channels that I use the most were The Noted Anatomist. Um, he goes through great detail in particular with things like the abdomen and the peritoneum. And he's quite funny as well. And the second one is Anatomy Zone. And they use these sort of 3D images to help you orientate around the body and understand concepts a lot easier. I'm sure there's lots more resources that you guys will find on there as well. Okay, so moving on to the revision tools that are good for practicing. So with the MRCS part A, the breadth of the topics that are included in the exam are so vast, it's impossible to cover them all effectively just by reading and making notes. The best way to cover the content is undeniably through question banks um, and doing questions regularly and consistently all the way up till the exam. But there are a couple of options on offer. The two big players are EMRCS and Pass Test. I have used both of them. I'll show you a bit about what they look like and how they are to use, uh, as well as giving you some pros and cons to help you make a decision on which one would be best for you. Okay, so first up is EMRCS. This is what the homepage looks like. Here are all your questions with all their categories. So there's around just over 2,000 questions. Here you can see um, how far your exam is, which is as useful as it is terrifying. And here you can see your sort of average scores 
and what percentile you're in compared to other users. So if we look at the categories now to see what the questions look like, you can expand each category and they're generally divided into paper one and paper two. So the basic sciences, this is basically paper one, general surgical topics and principles of surgery in general, uh, roughly paper two. So we can tick which categories we want to go through. So if I just uh, untick everything apart from anatomy, so the format is quite similar to the exam. There's a question, there's five options, with one of them being the most correct. You can skip a question if you're not sure. You can flag a question if you want to go back to it later. And on answering the question, you can see how other people have answered it. And most importantly, you get quite a good um, explanation as well underneath, which is the notes from the textbook that the, the question bank offers. You can end and review back to the main menu and then you can see that your progress up here updates. The price point for EMRCS is £30 for four month access and £40 for six month access and you can buy them at any point um, regardless of when your exam actually is. Okay so in terms of the pros of EMRCS I'd say that the interface is very easy to use as you just saw. The price point is quite reasonable and most importantly I think this is the question bank that reflects the nature of the actual exam the most heavily in terms of the wording and the difficulty of the question. Um, so I think it's a definite must for if you are preparing for the part A. In terms of the cons, there is no offline access and no app version of it available as of yet. It's a bit harder to do these questions on the move if you're commuting or don't have internet access on your phone for example. The next up is pass test. Um, as you can see, it looks quite different. So this is the main home page. You've got your question bank. You've also got some mock exam and pass papers, which are built just like the real exam. So three hours long and two hours long, if you want to practice that experience. They also have other resources here like videos and podcasts. And here is the tracking system. There's quite a few different views here of your progress. You can see how many questions you've done, how many are remaining. You can see performance over time and it can also break down your performance into different specialities. So there's a lot of data down here. If we start the question bank from here, you can see there's a lot of different filtering options as well. So again, we can filter into different specialities but there's a lot more topics within the speciality. So for example, even um, within anatomy, which is at the bottom, you can see you can split it down even further into uh, brain, lower limbs. Now, I won't apply any filters for now, and if we just start the questions, so we can see what they look like. Um, it's similar uh, sort of question with five options, one being the right. We can see again how people have responded. They also rate this into difficulties, so easy, medium and hard. Also got an explanation underneath as well. So some text, some imaging, there's some resources there. There's also um, reasoning why all the wrong options are wrong. Uh, and sometimes they have other resources down here like videos if they're relevant. The price pointing works slightly differently with past test. Um, as you can see over here, it's based on the exam sittings rather than for a predefined amount of time. So um, if you want access until the next exam, it's £84. If you want it until the April exam, it's £135 and so on. Okay, so in terms of the main benefits, as we saw, the categorization options are a lot better, which I found really helped me with more focused revision. So if I just revised upper limb, um, on EMRCS you can only tick all of anatomy, but with pass test you can filter that out even more and select upper limb specifically. They also have the mock exams that we went through as well. One of the biggest advantages is that pass test does have offline access. They have an app which you can download. In terms of the pitfalls, obviously the price is a big one. It is a lot more expensive than EMRCS. Um, and secondly, I think the questions were not as reflective of the exam as the EMRCS question bank was. They were slightly easier, a bit more straightforward, I found. Nonetheless, the first time I sat the exam, I found past tests really useful for getting to grips with topics and they sort of prepped me for then being ready for the EMRCS questions which were more difficult. So um, it is possible to use them both together. If you're trying to cut costs and choose between them, 
I would pick EMRCS purely because it's cheaper uh, and more reflective of the exam, but there are lots of benefits that pass test offers um, if you're interested in that too. Firstly, how long do you need? Um, I would say around four months is quite comfortable on the premise that you can dedicate around two to three hours a day. If you don't think you can do that, then obviously increase the time frame by more, perhaps to five months or six months if you can do less um, revision on a daily basis. The next thing to consider is where do you make a start? So the syllabus is huge, as we looked at earlier. The most important thing to do is to extract the topics that are the most heavily weighted, which is of course anatomy by far, followed closely by um, common surgical conditions, pathology and physiology and prioritize those. I've discussed tons of resources and different question banks as well. And one of the mistakes that's really easy to make and something I made the first time round was to be very overwhelmed by how much information there is and how much information you need to know and try and consume all of everything and then not actually move forward and not actually work very efficiently to cover the content in time. Don't do what I did the first time and think you have to gather everything and revise all the topics inside out, making notes. Um, and that resulted in me very much neglecting the question banks. And that really cost me, I think, in the exam because I left all the questions until I thought I was ready. You're never going to feel ready because the more you do, the more you'll realize that there is left to do. So don't worry about what scores you're getting, put your pride and ego aside and just launch yourself into the questions. It's really good to have your gathering and practicing in tandem for that reason. You know, there's no point just gathering apples and putting them in your basket, but never actually stopping to taste them. To summarize, let the knowledge you get from your gathering guide what questions you do and let the stuff you learn from the questions guide what topics you then look into in more detail and slowly but surely you'll start to build um, build on the whole MRCS syllabus and be able to cover quite a lot in short bursts. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about my exact workflow of how I tackled the topics, how I made notes and how I um, tried to retain the content. I can do another video looking at that in more detail if you wish. Let me know in the comments below or feel free to message me on my Instagram too. Okay, I just wanted to finish with some closing advice if you've made it this far. Firstly, if you have just graduated from medical school recently or the last exam you did were undergraduate exams, get ready for a whole new revision experience that you might not be used to. It's a very different story revising when you've also got a job and other responsibilities. So have some realistic um, goals and realistic targets that you're working towards. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So pace yourself um, and you will get through it. You have to try and balance this exam alongside your shifts in terms of on calls and night shifts. Try and plan well ahead in advance and look at the exam date. Look what shifts you have leading up to it. If they are on calls, long shifts, swap them as soon as you can and then try and take at least the week leading up to the exam off. You really do need that time off to focus and cover lots of content and give yourself that last push to cover all the questions you can. It will really benefit you in the exam and put you in the right headspace for it as well. And another benefit of doing it in the foundation years is that you can try and coordinate it around a slightly more relaxed job like GP or a community job like psychiatry as you will have more free time naturally to dedicate to revision alongside your job. Secondly, now going right up to the exam date or the night before, um, make sure that you finish early that day, stop revising, have a really good night's sleep. The exam day is exhausting. It's five hours of concentration and it's really mentally and physically draining. Look after yourself um, in the months, weeks and the night before the exam as well. Okay, that's everything from me today. I hope you found that useful and I hope you use some of these tips for your own revision. Um, I also hope you find some enjoyment in the process as well. The content of the exam is really interesting, nice to sort of have a goal to work towards. I know that's something that we all really enjoy. Remember, it's not just an exam to now pass to the next step. It's actually the first step to becoming a surgeon, which is, um, if you're sitting this exam, something I'm sure everyone's looking forward to so i hope you enjoy it if you have any other questions comment below or message me good luck and goodbye